And we're clear on the radar right now. We're expecting to have a nice Saturday. We should see plenty of sunshine today with temperatures in the 90s. We are expecting a heat wave after the weekend. I'll have the timing and what to expect afterwards coming up in just a little bit. Now on Good Morning Augusta, the battle is on to combat Georgia's abortion bill. Find out what's being done as your only source for local weekend morning news starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6. Good morning, Augusta. And it's 7 o'clock. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sean Cabbage Doc. And I'm Alex Moore. Sean, we're expecting our second heat wave of the summer, and it's coming Monday. It's going to be another hot one. Uh oh, well, we'll check in with you soon. Mm -hmm. Coverage you can count on begins with hepatitis A in Columbia County. The Board of Health says that an employee at Steak and Shake on Bel Air Frontage Road was diagnosed with the infection. The person is currently not working at the restaurant. Fellow employees are being offered a vaccination. A health department spokesperson says that the risk of transmission to the public is considered low, but if you have any concerns, see your doctor or go to a county health department. A lawsuit filed in federal court aims at striking down Georgia's new abortion law that bans abortions after six weeks before most women even know they're pregnant. Richard Elliott reports. And we fight every day for the right, our human right to bodily autonomy. All the groups represented in the lawsuit to overturn Georgia's heartbeat abortion law met outside the federal courthouse Friday morning. But earlier, we met with the ACLU's legal director, Sean Young, to talk about the suit and why he thinks they can convince a judge to overturn the law. We went through the suit line by line and, boiled down, they think the law will not hold up to constitutional scrutiny. This ban is blatantly unconstitutional under 50 years of Supreme Court precedent. And politicians have no business telling women or couples when to start or expand a family. We were there in May as Governor Brian Kemp signed the heartbeat abortion bill into law. It bans abortions at the first sign of a fetal heartbeat, essentially six weeks. His office and the Attorney General's office had no comment on the suit, but back in May, Kemp said he anticipated legal challenges. I realize that some may challenge it in the court of law, but our job is to do what is right, yes. not what is easy. This is the first stage of our complaint. ACLU of Georgia's executive director, Andrea Young, says if the suit failed and the law went into effect next January, it would have a devastating effect on women. It would have a terrible effect on, uh, on health. Uh, for women and on women's ability to make personal and private decisions about when and whether uh, to have or expand a family. And the case is likely to go all the way up to the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, a judge in Indiana has blocked that state's attempt to ban certain abortion procedures in his second trimester. And a look at the Jiffy Loop Skyview Network over Washington Road. It is a nice morning. The sun is already out, so we are expecting another very typical summer day here in Augusta. We are clear over the radar right now. We expect to stay clear for the most or for the rest of the day. We do have a slight chance, and I mean a very minimal chance, that we could see some rain today. Temperatures right now 74 in Augusta, 72 in Fort Gordon and Grovetown, 70 in Evans and Appling, 66 and Aiken. They're on the uh, 65 in North Augusta. They're actually the low point. We are expecting uh, another warm weekend again. 93 today, 96 Sunday, but the heat index is what we are concerned about. They're getting into the 100 degree range. We are expecting another heat wave after this weekend. I'll have the timing on that coming up in just a little bit. Sean, back over to you. All right, Alex, thank you so much. An Augusta mother is facing charges this morning, accused of starving her child. Investigators say Veronica Mims is charged with child cruelty. The one-year-old was taken to Augusta University back on June 9th for being unresponsive and cold. Doctors say the infant was malnourished, dehydrated, and limp. Anthony Enriquez, who investigators say is Mims' boyfriend, is also charged with child cruelty. Investigators in Aiken County looking for a suspect in a shooting that happened Thursday night. Witnesses told deputies that the victim was in an argument with Christopher Williams on Bonnie Blue Drive when Williams shot him several times. Williams will be charged with attempted murder and attempted armed robbery. A second suspect, Lachelle Guzman Smith, is also charged with attempted murder. She was arrested Friday. Augusta's Recreation and Parks Department looking for advice when it comes to the future of Fleming Park. Commissioners approved rewiring the park in February after a 12 year old was electrocuted when he touched the fence. So far, no work has taken place, angering some people. The Rec Department is waiting for consultants and commissioners to help decide the future of the park before doing that work. There's some perception issues maybe out there, no matter uh, how well you restore that to a ball field. So. 
Um, I think it also takes some community engagement in seeing what the public really wants um, Fleming Park to look like. Some people may not want to bring their children to play ball there again. Yeah. And officials expect to hear back from the consultants in July. A futuristic robot race at Augusta University, the university wrapping up its cyber camp for high school students. And Friday, they put what they learned to the test. Our Devin Johnson was there. For the past five years, Augusta University has hosted a seven-day residential cyber camp for high school juniors and seniors. It's called Gen Cyber Camp, and the mission is to grow the number of students studying cybersecurity. Just coming back and teaching this program every year is just putting this knowledge to use and helps me further understand the concepts that I learned in class. Peeler is a sophomore at Georgia Tech. He has been with Gen Cyber since it started when he was a student camper. It's, it's a great experience and it sets them up for real education in college. Other counselors say this year's camp is special. They had more girls to sign up eight in total. It's like kind of disappointing, but also like really cool because like we did break that barrier. It definitely feels nice to feel like I'm um, achieving something big or like changing something that's been um, pretty constant in society. Both Anaya and Sabrina tell me their goal is to beat the boys in the robot competition. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> we also yeah. outnumber a boy in our group. Gen Cyber has 122 camps offered during the summer. One student tried from Connecticut to be here. My mom's like, why don't you try looking across the countries, just see what, what's out there. And we found this and then they were pretty happy to have a free camp from one of the best schools. Andrew tells me other camps were charging about $5,000. He hopes his time in Augusta will guide him in the right career path. Right now we're doing a lot with programming and coding, which is very good and that's like the basis of what we need to know. But I want to get a little bit more into the security part. The Gen Cyber Camp may be one way to bring more people like Andrew into the Garden City's growing industry. In Augusta, Devin Johnson, WJBF, News Channel 6. And today, the School of Computers, Sciences, and Cybersecurity will hold a graduation for the campers to recognize them for all their hard work. Also happening today, Augusta Animal Services is having rabies and microchipping clinic from 12 until 4. It will take place at the shelter located at 4164 Mackey Lane. Rabies vaccinations are $5. Parvo and Dipster vaccinations are $10. FVR, CP vaccinations for cats are $10 and microchipping is $15. And today only, all animals will be adopted for $10. You don't have to be a resident of Richmond County to take advantage of the clinic. A local shelter is in need of more adopters and fosters to combat the overflow of cats and kittens in their shelter. Aiken's SPCA Albright Center, known as a no-kill shelter, says that they're close to having to consider euthanasia for the first time in seven years. It's all because that there are too many cats coming in. The SPCA is urging people to come to their shelter located at 199 Willow Run and adopt or foster some of those cats and kittens. The shelter will be open today through Wednesday and Friday this week from 11 until 5. They will be closed on Thursday for the 4th. All cats and kitten adoptions are free. And straight ahead, we'll introduce you to a local author whose new book is aimed at helping women. Stay tuned. And we're expecting another nice day for the pool. Temperatures are going to be in the low 90s. Plenty of sunshine, so if you're going to be out at the pool today, don't forget that sunscreen. It's going to be a nice weekend for the pool. I'll have more on the upcoming heat wave in just a little bit.
You're talking to me? Oh, no. And another look at the Jiffy Lube Skyview Network over Television Park. It's a lovely morning out. We don't have much in terms of cloud cover. Uh, it is a pretty warm morning out, actually. It's a nice morning for the lake if you're out and about. It's uh, got any lake plans today. It's going to be a nice lake day, plenty of sunshine, 90 degrees. The water temperature is nice at 86. So if you're going to be out, make sure you stay safe, wear that sunscreen, and enjoy your weekend. Sean, over to you. All right, Alex, thank you so much. And losing weight can be frustrating and depressing, but one woman wants to help other women get off the couch. Joining me today is author of Girl, Get Off the Couch, is Dr. Rodina Brown and Minister Nick Rodisha. I'm sorry That's about that. Right. Yeah. That's all right. And Minister Nikita <laughs> Davis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. No thank problem. You. Nice to meet you. <laughs> all right, so tell me a little bit about the book. So the book is my personal journey from losing 80 plus pounds to being a healthy size six. Mm -hmm. And not only was I a former big girl, but I'm also a licensed therapist. And I talk about the emotional piece and some mental piece that's key in losing weight and keeping it off. Yeah, and you just touched on this, but what led you to even writing this book? Um, I wanted people to understand that depression has no face. Mm -hmm. I suffered from depression and I talk really openly about that in my struggles and it led me to gain a whole bunch of weight and it was difficult for me to lose it. And until I was willing to, to get professional help, to start that process, that healing process, to get mind, body, spirit, alignment and balance, I wasn't able to lose the weight and I want to help women and encourage women on their journey. Yeah, so is this only for women or men or anyone who needs a little encouragement? <laughs> Anybody that needs a little encouragement. The book is written, it says girl get off the couch specifically for women, but anybody struggling to lose weight, I talk about the journey, I talk about the process, I talk about putting yourself for, um, first and the mental health piece um, as a component and the driver for change and permanent change. Yeah, yes. so you have a book signing coming up, so tell me a little bit about the time and place. Yes, yeah, so I actually have two book signings today. Um, today <laughs> I will be at Barnes & Nobles from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. here in Augusta, and then this afternoon is my book signing slash party at Humana Tree House here in Augusta from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Come on out, get your book signed, give me some love, some hugs, and, um, and let's celebrate. Yeah, and Minister Davis, what should people take away from this book? Absolutely. Um, really, Dr. Radisha Brown really kind of nailed it that really you are worth it. You've got to know that you are worth it so that you can lose the weight as her publisher really brought me back because I'm a former big girl too, just like her. Yeah. And so when we collaborated, it was just awesome yeah. um, just to know that you're worth it and that you can do the right steps the right way as she does show in the book so you can get off the couch and be healthy too. Yes. Yeah. So as a publisher, are there certain tips you have for folks who want to get into the business? Absolutely. Just really let go and let God is what I would say, you know, <laughs> let go and let God just get it out, put it on paper. It doesn't matter. Don't be um, just this critique or a critic over your own work. Put it on paper and then you can go through the process of properly editing. Or if you need help, please reach out to Jesus Coffee and Prayer. I'll be glad to help you. You I can find me it. on social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds good, ladies. Thank you so much for Thank joining me. Thank you so much. No God problem. Bless you. God bless you, too. Your Live Viper 6 forecast is up next.
Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6 in partnership with AECOM. Imagine it. Deliver. And another look at the Jiffy Lube Skyview Network over SRP Park. The sun is out. The sun is shining. It is a nice morning. If you are, uh, have any morning plans, it's uh, basically a full go to be outside and enjoy it. It's going to be a nice Saturday. We do have a slim chance for rain, but right now we are clear over the area. We're going to stay that way for a while. As we begin to increase the temperature, that's when we might see some rain. Temperatures right now 69 in Augusta, 66 in Aiken, 64 in Saluda. So that's our low end in Allendale, 72, and Mill in Sylvania at 73. Also, it's Swainsboro, so we're in that upper 60 to lower 70 range. We're right at our dew point, so if you're going to be out right now, you probably feel the humidity. I know I had a bunch of fog on my windshield this morning. 93 for your temperature today in Augusta, 92 in Aiken and Evans. A little cooler up in McCormick and Saluda. It'd be around 90. Could be a little warmer than that today. 93 in Allendale, Barnwell, Bamberg, and Sylvania. You could be around 94. Same thing for uh, Mill and Swainsboro, Wrightsboro. You guys could see that 93, 94 range including Gibson Sparta, 92, 93. It looks like we're going to be in that low 90 range. Uh, and today our, our setup is this high pressure, and what it's going to do is spin uh, clockwise and bring a little bit of flow from the Atlantic into our area. So about 3 o'clock, you can see isolated showers starting to pop up, and through the day as the sun is out, we might see one of those sneak into the area throughout the afternoon, and it will bring a nice little relief, actually, for whatever we have any plans for this, this afternoon, because it's going to be a hot one. It's going to feel hotter too, especially once we go through Sunday because we're going to pick up uh, a few more uh, degrees because that high pressure has moved a little bit south. So what we're going to do is bring a little bit more of a flow and then eventually that high is going to move out of the way along with that front on Sunday. And then the high right here this one is going to bring us our heat wave. That's what's going to be responsible for the heat wave starting on Monday. And you'll see we go from 93, which is our average high, to Monday we have 98 degrees. That's when we're going to start pushing those 100 degree temperatures. And as you can see, if it's going to be that, our heat index is going to climb. Sunday we're expecting temperatures to feel like 99. So tomorrow it's going to feel like it's going to be about 100 degrees. And then for the next seven days, we're going to be pushing that feel like temperature at 100 degrees again so look at your seven day 93 96 saturday and sunday today these this weekend is going to be a very nice weekend very minimal chance for rain but do not be surprised if we do see a raindrop or two and we do have that heat wave right around the corner after the weekend temperatures are going to start pushing 100 degrees for the holiday week so if you are going to be out and about just be aware of that speaking of which the warning to parents as the heat wave grips parts of the country at least 15 hot car deaths have been reported in the U.S. this year. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore. This frantic scene unfolding outside an Oklahoma liquor store. Police trying to open a car's doors. A 14-month-old child left inside Wednesday. As two women walk toward the car. Is this your car? Yes, sir. Open it up right now. Turn and put your hands behind your back. Sure. What the hell were you thinking? A second officer removing the child. Start, buddy. Police say he was wearing only a wet diaper, clammy to touch, and had bright red skin. Is that your child? Then you come here. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. The child's mother arrested. In 2018, 52 children died in hot cars across the country, and already this year, more than a dozen have lost their lives. And police tell us that second woman could face charges too, and authorities are telling people to leave a cell phone, a handbag, or a work ID, something that will make you go to the back of your car every time you park, to help prevent these tragedies. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Dallas. And after the break is the medical report. Sometimes the summertime heat can make it hard to sleep. We'll share some tips on how you can catch some Z's. No, he's just setting the shot, but you'll have graphics full when we come back and then I have everything else.
And we're going to have another warm weekend. Temperatures today around 93 degrees. We should have lots of sun. We do have a marginal, a very small risk of uh, some showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Nothing too big. It might just cool off the area. Sean, back over to you. And the FDA is warning pet owners this morning about dog food causing heart disease. The administration started the investigation in July of last year. Officials believe certain ingredients like peas, lentils, and potatoes can cause the condition. A new report states that more than 500 brands are linked to the condition, including Blue Buffalo, Natural Balance, Neutro, and Rachel Rain. The FDA says that if your dog has heart disease, please report it. The best room temperature for sleeping is said to be between 60 and 67 degrees, but in the summer months, that can be tricky. Meredith Wood shares some tips on how to beat the heat while you sleep. When it feels like an inferno outside, it can be hard to get it totally cooled down inside. And that warm air can be even more annoying when you're trying to get some sleep. So just how do you get comfortable and have a good night's rest in the warm weather? The National Sleep Foundation has five tips for getting your best Z's this summer. Keep the air moving. If you don't have air conditioning, open the windows and turn on a fan to get some circulation. Step it up by putting a bowl of ice in front of the fan for some added cooling. Shower before bedtime. This will help your body cool down and leave a little moisture on your skin, making the effects of the fan even more pronounced. Sleep in breathable fabrics. Avoid fabrics like silk that trap sweat. Opt for natural breathable fabrics like cotton instead. Block out the sun's rays. Keeping the room darker will naturally keep it cooler. Finally, try not to let all that summer fun throw off your sleeping habits and avoid excessive drinking. Make sure you still get the amount of sleep you need even if the sun is still shining outside. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. Coming up on Good Morning Augusta, President Trump declares a truce with China and pitches a quick meeting with North Korea during the G20 summit. We'll take a closer look. But first, let's go to New York, where Whit Johnson is standing by with a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning, Whit. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, President Trump touching down in South Korea. What he's saying about the upcoming visit and his last-minute offer to Kim Jong-un. Plus, post-debate damage control. Former Vice President Joe Biden fighting back after coming under fire on stage. How he's now defending his civil rights record. And finally, the U.S. women's soccer team advancing to the semifinals of the World Cup, taking down the French team in extreme temperatures. How Team USA is preparing for the next face-off. That's all ahead on GMA.
Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6. Good morning, Augusta. And it's 7.30. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Sean Cabbage. Doc. And I'm Alex Moore. We're expecting another heat wave, Sean. It's going to be, uh, well, it's actually kind of starting right now because we're going to warm up to it. But yeah. Monday, it's looking like our second heat wave of the summer. Uh-oh. Well, we don't have a heat wave going on right now, though, do we? No, but it's still pretty warm out. We're actually uh, going to be just about average for this time of year. Uh, take a look at the Jiffy Loop Skyview Network. You can see we had a very nice morning. The sun is out right now, so we are going to start warming up throughout the rest of the day. Uh, we are clear over Augusta right now. We do have that high pressure system just north of Charlotte, and that's what's driving our weather. It could bring us a small chance of rain uh, this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon. Temperature right now 74 in Augusta, 71 in Hepsipa, Fort Gordon, and Grovetown, even up there in Clarks Hill, 68 in Aiken, 65 in North Augusta at the low point. So we are around that 70 degree mark. We'll climb into the low 90s today, and then we will also have a heat index around 96. Plenty of sunshine, again, a Minimal chance of rain in the afternoon throughout uh, the evening. Same thing for tomorrow. Uh, temperature around 96 degrees. It will be sunny. The heat index around 99. Also, another slight chance of rain. Sean, back over to you. All right, Alex, thank you so much. Coverage you can count on continues with today's headlines. Let's get right to it. The Board of Health says an employee at Steak and Shake on Bel Air Frontage Road was diagnosed with hepatitis A. The person is currently not working at the restaurant. Fellow employees are being offered a vaccination. A health department spokesman says that the risk of transmission to the public is low, but if you have any concerns, see your doctor or go to your county health department. An Augusta mother facing charges this morning accused of starving her child. Investigators say Veronica Mims is charged with child cruelty. The one-year-old was taken to Augusta University back on June 9th for being unresponsive and cold. Doctors say the infant was malnourished, dehydrated, and limp. Anthony Enriquez, who investigators say is Mims' boyfriend, is also charged with child cruelty. Investigators in Aiken County looking for a suspect in a shooting that happened Thursday night. Witnesses told deputies that the victim was in an argument with Christopher Williams on Bonnie Blue Drive when Williams shot him several times. Williams will be charged with attempted murder and attempted armed robbery. A second suspect, Lachelle Guzman-Smith, is also charged with attempted murder. She was arrested Friday. President Trump expected to be in South Korea and meet with Moon Jae-in later today. The commander-in-chief and president of China wrapping up a news conference at the G20 summit. The two sitting down in the most anticipated and perhaps most consequential amid the ongoing trade disputes. But President Trump's visit with world leaders not only focused on trade, a possible visit to North Korea also reportedly in the cards. Karen Trevers with that story. And for President Trump sitting down with President Xi for a high-stakes meeting. I look forward to working with you. As you know, we've had a excellent relationship. With trade talks stalled and a threat of new tariffs on the table, the presidents were looking to make a deal. Later, Mr. Trump said the two sides declared a truce for now. For at least the time being, we're not going to be lifting tariffs. President Trump also making news on Twitter, announcing he would like to meet Kim Jong-un at the DMZ while visiting South Korea on Sunday. I asked the president about that during his meeting with the Saudi crown prince. All I did is put out a feeler if he'd like to meet. Uh, he uh, sent me a very beautiful uh, birthday card. The president said if a meeting with Kim happened, it could be brief, even just two minutes. Very receptive, he responded, and so we'll see. North Korea called the president's offer, quote, a very interesting suggestion. And the president at his press conference asked about his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. I thought it was really a, a tremendous discussion. I think they'd like to do uh, trade with the United States, and they have great product. He was also asked whether he spoke to the Saudi crown prince about the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. They've taken it very, very seriously and uh, they will continue to. Karen Travers, ABC News, traveling with the president in Osaka, Japan. And if you love chicken wings like I do, you're in luck. Augusta's Wild Wing Cafe drops in to show us how to get those perfect wings for the holiday. Hey, and if you like eating wings by the pool, it's going to be a great day for that. Temperature's going to be nice and hot. I don't recommend eating wings by the pool, but it still might be nice. But if you're going to do it, today's going to be a great day for it. Enjoy it. I'll have more coming up after the break.
And another look at the Jiffy Loop Skyview Network over Television Park here. We did have a nice sunrise. Uh, it's a nice morning out. The cloud cover isn't too much, uh, just a little hazy. Uh, temperatures are actually pretty nice in the 70s. We're expecting another warm afternoon. If you're heading out to the lake, it'll be a nice lake day. Water temperature around 86 degrees, so it'll be nice to take a dip. Should have a nice day, a spotty chance for a shower in the afternoon, but should be a nice day overall. Sean, over to you. All right, and when you think of the 4th of July, you think about fireworks and food. Joining me today is Maura Santos and Jenna Childs with Wild Wing Cafe for a great wing recipe. Nice to meet you, ladies. You too. Pleasure Thank to you. Here. No problem. It smells great in here, so let's get right to it. What do we have? All righty. So we're featuring the Honey Lime Sriracha Wing today. And the reason we chose that is because it's a nice, light, summer, fresh-tasting, easy-to-make recipe that anyone can do. Ah, okay. All right, so first thing we need is our sriracha sauce. And we're going to pull this into the bowl. It's just a few simple ingredients. The next item that we're going to add is our fresh squeezed lime juice and our fresh squeezed orange juice. Following that, we're going to pour in cilantro. And last but not least, honey. So it's five cups of the sriracha, two cups of honey, approximately eight squeezed oranges and six limes, and then one cup of cilantro. Okay. And all you have to do is mix this together. Anybody could do this, right? Yeah, even I can do this. See, <laughs> you're in the right spot. Now, it's really important that your wings are cooked first, and we fry ours. Okay. We don't batter them. We don't dip them in anything. Um, we have to reach an internal temperature of 300, uh, excuse me, the fryer is at 350 degrees. We want the chicken to be 165 degrees. We don't want anyone to get sick, especially in the summer when we tend to have um, things maybe at the pool sitting out too long. Absolutely. So after the wings are absolutely fried and reached 165 degrees, we're going to dip them in. Okay, and then they would go on to, we bake our wings, that's the secret for Wild Wing Cafe. We bake them in the oven. That way the skin gets nice and crispy and the flavor gets infused right into the skin and into the meat. So while we want the flavor to be there, we want it to be a little more intense. So we're going to pretend we've baked them. Okay. An easy way at home too is to grill them. So you could prepare your wings first and then put them on the grill and that will seal in the flavor very, very nicely. And again, this is a nice, light, summery dish. Everyone's trying to make sure that they can stay in their shorts and their swimsuits and not feel bad about having chicken wings. Absolutely. And Jenna, what's your favorite um, flavor? Mine is actually the honey lime sriracha just because it's made with all natural fresh ingredients. We're hand squeezing the, um, the uh, lime and orange juice with it. So I just love it just because it's a fresh and healthy wing. We're all about being healthy. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Even with chicken yes. wings. Absolutely. Well, it doesn't have to be all bad. Right. Everything no. in moderation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex, get out of there. <laughs> and where are you guys located? Um, our headquarters is in Charlotte, and I work mm -hmm. out of Charlotte. And Jen is from um, Columbia, uh, South Carolina. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And do we have any Wild Wing cafes here in Augusta? We sure do. There's one right down the street, mm -hmm. and we're opening a brand new one in Grovetown on the 10th. All right, sounds good. I didn't ask you which one is your favorite flavor. Well, my favorite favorite flavor I didn't bring today because it's not as popular as jalapeno cheddar. Oh. I like to live on the edge. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to um, check that out then. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming. I really thank do you. appreciate it. It's our thank pleasure. You. Thank, thank you. you. Your Live Viper 6 forecast is up next.
Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6 in partnership with AECOM. Imagine it delivered. And a look at the Jiffy Loop Skyview Network over at Television Park. We had a lovely morning. The sunrise uh, was a very nice one. Sun is out. We don't have too much in terms of sky cover right now. We should stay that way through most of the morning till the sun really starts getting overhead. We, you can see we are clear over the radar right now. Uh, we're going to stay that way. We might have a slight chance today for a shower, but uh, nothing too, mu too much. 69 degrees right now in Augusta, 70 in Evans. 65 up in Saluda, 67 in McCormick, we have 75 down in Swainsboro, 73 in Allendale, 74 in Sylvania. So we're in that uh, upper 60s, uh, lower 70s range. Our dew point right now is slowly starting to climb. Uh, temperatures are around 70 right now for the dew point. So things are going to start feeling a little muggy in the morning, but once that sun comes out, will probably stop feeling as muggy. Temperature right now, or we're looking at 93 degrees for a forecast uh, at, here in Augusta, 92 in Aikens and Evan, 91 in Edgefield, 94 in Sylvania, Bamberg, Allendale, Barnwell could reach 94 today too. Also Mill and Swainsboro, Wrightsboro, Sandersville, Louisville will all be close to that 94 degree range, but a couple of degrees cooler up towards the north. So things are uh, going to be fairly warm again today. And it's because we have this high pressure system spinning clockwise, bringing flow right off of the coast and into the Augusta area. And that's where we have the spotty chance, a very slight chance in the afternoon around three o'clock to uh, probably by the time the sun goes down uh, for a slight chance of a shower. And it'll just be one to cool off the area. It'll be actually probably a pretty welcome shower if we do have one. So today's going to be a very nice day. Same setup tomorrow around 8 a.m. This high pressure does not move. And so we're going to see uh, things starting to uh, develop over the day. And again, we could get a passing shower in the afternoon. Uh, it'll be another one where we could welcome a cool off. And then what's going to happen is we're going to move into Monday where this high pressure down here in New Orleans is going to move just over to the panhandle of Florida. And that's where we're going to start the uh, the warm up. And as you can see on Monday, we go from Saturday average high to Monday, we're pushing 100 degrees again. That means that we're going to see the heat index climb too. So Sunday, our heat index around 99. Today, it's going to feel about 96. Tomorrow, it's going to feel about 99. And then we're going to push it into the triple digits. So that's going to mean it's going to be very hot for the next seven days. But this weekend should be a very nice weekend around normal. Should be a very typical summer day for the next two days. 20% chance of range so it'd be a very spotty chance once we get into monday that's when we'll see those changes and that's when we're going to have our uh, uh, setup be a little different we're going to bring in the next heat wave for the summer with temperatures reaching 100 degrees but it's going to be a nice weekend up until then and now we have the weather question of the day and it's a doozy good luck everyone mm -hmm. The transport of an atmospheric property solely by the mass motion of the atmosphere is what Advection, backing, conduction, or divergence. It's very key to what's going to happen on Monday. Ah, uh, can I have a clue? <clears throat> Do we have a clue? Uh, a clue here. Or a lifeline? Uh, I can tell you it's not the bottom two. Ah, okay. Because I, I, I was thinking C, so you said it's not the bottom two, so we'll go with A. All right, you guys are going to go with A. I will have the answer coming up at the end of the show with an explanation. All right, sounds good. Sports is next.
Now, sports coverage you can count on. The Atlanta Braves will have two starters in next month's Midsummer Classic. Outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. and first baseman Freddie Freeman. Acuna becomes the youngest Brave to ever start an All-Star game at age 21. Freeman, the first Brave to start in back-to-back All-Star games since Chipper Jones, 2001. Braves opening their series with the Mets last night. 3-2 ball game in the eighth. Bases loaded, and this play blew it up for the Braves. Johan Camargo is going to deliver in a big way. Been struggling at the plate, but his average with the bases loaded is pretty good. And that clears everyone off the base pass. Braves would take a 6-2 lead. That's how it would finish. They get the win in New York. Green Jackets taking on Lexington last night. Green Jackets wearing those sweet, sweet water brewery jerseys that were auctioned off after the game. Uh, in game one, the Jackets rattled off <coughs> nine runs, but this one was a pitcher's duel. And check it out there. Rebendi Jaquez doubles into right, but the throw home to Jeffrey Parra is spot on, gets the punch out. Score stays even at zero. But a runner did move to third, and on an errant pitch by Keaton Wynn, Eric Cole comes in to score, gives Lexington the lead, and that was the only run of the night. One nothing the final from SRP Park. Quite a start for a pair of locals on the new PGA Tour stop in Detroit. Charles Howell III in opening round 7 under 65. Kevin Kisner right behind him 6 under 66. Round 2, they're trying to make it happen again. Charles Howell the third wrapping up his front 9 at 9 under right there. 33 on the front with a birdie right there. Long one drops for CH3. And then we move ahead to number 15, the par 3. Both Howell and Kisner were in a bit of trouble, but that's how you... Make the two from the bunker for Hal. Chips it in, got him to within one shot at the lead at the time at 12 under. Here's Kisner, who was short on his approach. That's a five wood in his hand. Yeah, taking the utility club out off the green, and that gets it done. In the cup, gets him to nine under at the time. Kisner would bogey 17. Here's a look at the leaderboard. Charles out the third, five under, 67. Two shots off the lead. Kisner, two under, heading into moving day. And the United States women's national team, big contingent of U.S. fans making their way to Paris yesterday, and the United States got it done over what is many believe the other best team in this tournament, Megan Rapino. A pair of goals to get by France, two to one. She becomes the first player ever to score four straight goals for a team in a World Cup. The United States will take on England in the semifinals on Tuesday at 3 p.m. That does it for Morning Sports.
And your weather question of the, de of the day. Transport of an atmospheric property solely by the mass motion of the atmosphere is what? It is advection. We love advection. So what that means is that this high pressure system as you see on the screen here, if you were to look to the right of it around New York, New Jersey, the way we look at it is that that high pressure spins clockwise. So the weather that we see in New England around Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, the, the, the weather there would actually rotate down to the south where Virginia and West Virginia is, and they would actually see very similar weather to it. So that's why we're going to see uh, the heat wave, uh, because we're going to get a high pressure over the Gulf, and that's going to bring all that heat from Texas right over to Augusta. Oh, uh, thank you, my friend. Mm -hmm. And finally this morning, a toddler on the move is not a strange thing, but for this little boy, it's something to marvel. Here's ABC's Tom Lamas. Nearly anywhere you go inside the Moreland family home, you're bound to find little Brody coming in hot, rolling, playing, even chasing after his cat Jill. Brody wasn't always a man on the move. For a while there, he spent so much of the day like this, on his belly, unable to go anywhere. He was born with spina bifida and spinal cord atrophy, essentially paralyzed below the chest. When Brody was about eight months old, I overheard some other parents talking about how their kids just destroyed their house and got toys everywhere. And it almost brought me to tears because for me, Brody wasn't ever going to be able to do that. Brody's parents decided they weren't going to let life pass him by. So his dad, Taylor, got to work. Completely self-taught, he started to design, build, and test a device he called the frog. They felt Brody looked like a little frog when they put him in it. Their son leaped into the challenge. The frog was exactly what he needed. Now he could reach for his toys, play in a makeshift fort, and cruise around the kitchen. It was life-changing for both him and us. But the story doesn't end here. The frog is taking off. 20 families now have a model. This is Max from Rockton, Illinois. Like Brody, now exploring a world that is just within his reach. And by now, you probably have a good sense of the Moreland family. But it gets better. The couple is giving away the frogs for free. It changed their lives. They're hoping it changes more. And that, and that frog is giving him a new lease on life. So that's definitely a great thing. Very exciting. See you all tomorrow.